Buff Nation! Let's go! Welcome in to DMVR Buffs Prime Time. We are presented by Illegal Pete's. Check out any of their 10 Colorado locations for happy hour, 36 p.m. every single day. Jake Schwan, it's RK. What's up, man? Not much. Recovering from a uh, disappointing Leeds result. They got mm. the point, but no one else cares about that. How's your Madden offseason going? Great. Great, <laughs> actually. You got game one tonight. Already yep. back at it. Yeah, we're wow. back at it. We're back at it. That was one it. of the fastest off seasons of all time. It was actually slow based on uh, our Madden League standards. Really? Yeah. It was like two-week break. <laughs> Crazy. Um, well, I guess we'll run on your schedule and just keep it rolling because this news from the spring game in the portal just keeps rolling, man. Just keeps rolling in. And, you know, um, the idiots keep running their mouths. And those who know continue to know. And... You know, the ball is now in Coach Prime's court yep. to uh, to start making the dominoes fall, which we know he's, you know, working on. Um, but people are, are going to have their their few minutes to talk their shit now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they're, they'll have to be quiet here pretty soon. Uh, I had a person, actually, you probably saw it too. It was in the DNVR buffs mentions being like, they only have 42 scholarship players now. And I just responded, should check that math tweet deleted. It's <laughs> yeah. so like people are just they're looking for any opportunity to uh, to come up with something, and it's it's gonna happen for like the next week or so. Yep. Until those those commits start rolling in for sure, and they're gonna start rolling in. We'll get to some guys who are visiting, some new players who have entered the portal, but we are again gonna start focusing on this roster and where we stand right now. Since last yesterday's show ended, four players entered the portal. Safety Jeremy Mack Jr., wide receiver Ty Robinson, defensive tackle Jalen Sami, linebacker Mr. Williams. That leaves only six players from CU's 2022 recruiting class still on the roster. Yeah, that one seems to be the one most out of here. Yeah. Um, Never really, like, built a connection to the program. Not, Not a lot of them played, so they don't have any tape to fall back on. Obviously, none of them were highly rated. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, the result is they just fall completely into the cracks and, and uh, you know, out of the out of the program. Yep. Still seems like we have some good ones, though. Van Wells, Isaac Hurtado, Anthony Hankerson, all from that 2022 recruiting class. Travis Gay, Carter Ed- or Travis Gray, Carter Edwards and Owen Carey. The total of six guys from last year's recruiting class who have managed to stick around. And how many are we down to from the original team now? Um, it's close to 22, I think, 23. Okay. Yeah. It's I mean, pretty severe. <laughs> like I said yesterday, when we went through this and we said, who are the must keeps? It was like six, mm-hmm. maybe. And, you know, Jordan Tyson was one of those who, again, you just never knew right. with the uh, with the injury. And so... You know, that one's unfortunate. I don't even think I had Montana in mind. Really? From the jump. Now, again, we talked about this yesterday, but, like, he had worked his way up and, you know, shown a good relationship with Shador, and so you thought maybe he was in it. But then I go back to this. One player, one player who had earned his number has transferred. Mm -hmm. And that's Aubrey Smith, which was a surprise to me when he got it, but also one of those things where it's like, you look at the position, four linebackers have gotten their numbers. Coach Hart was giving them out more than anyone else. Um, so for everyone who thinks that this was a you know a mass exodus that caught them by surprise, look at the guys who were transferring. Look at the guys who aren't. Yep. Um, there's a Denver Post article published by Sean Keeler titled, Ugly Side of Deion Sanders Effect, Angry CU Buffs Parents Confused Kids Who Felt Forced into Transfer Portal. What a surprising headline from the denver post (laughs) we're all shocked um he talked to a few players and parents go ahead what i was gonna well you can go into it you can go into it and then i'll give my take so uh right here starting the article he talked to grant page said i couldn't have stayed at cu i really wanted to they said it was just best for me to leave um and then he said it was my position coach so coach bartoloni Mm -hmm. basically told him he had to leave um they told everybody to go page continued Whoever entered the portal, that's who they told to go. Um, They also talked to Jordan Tyson's dad, John Tyson, and uh, he kind of held back, but he said, my thoughts on Dion wouldn't be good, so I'm not going to say anything. 
It's a bad situation for us as a family. I will say that. And it's unfortunate, but it's the nature of the system. Um, he continued, I pray for those kids that they're bringing in and the kids that decide to stay at Colorado. I pray to God they turn it around for them, the business of college football at the Power 5 level. It isn't an easy game. So here's what I'm going to say about this. First of all, it's Coach Prime to you, not Dion. Right. Um, <laughs> second of all, this is what Coach Prime said was going to happen. Yes. How many times do we have to say it? And the same thing happens every time some new detail emerges uh, where everyone, oh, oh my yeah. God, what is this? They, they're cutting guys? First of all, no. He said, I was told it's probably best for me to leave, which is what I, I have been saying on this show is going to happen forever, mm -hmm. right? There was all the stages. Leave if you want. And then it was going to progress on its way to, hey, you're probably not going to play here. It's probably best for both of us if you leave. That's not cutting anyone. That's just telling them the truth. How many times do we have to talk about Coach Prime and the truth, whether it's Coach Prime or his coaching staff telling these guys, hey, look, there's no room for you here. There's no spot for you here. There's no opportunity for you here anymore. It's probably best for you to move on. Right. And so, again, this is what Coach Prime said was going to happen. He said it, it was on them. Now it's on me. That means... Now I have to be real with them and let them know that it, there's no, there's nothing here for them. Right. So, yeah, is it harsh? We I always said it was going to be harsh. Yeah. It is harsh. Is it necessary? You're damn right it's necessary. We're <laughs> talking about guys, Jordan, save for Jordan Tyson, guys who didn't contribute on 1-11. And that's the thing that I keep looking to saying, what are y'all talking about? Right. Because I keep seeing, well, it's going to be tough for them to go out and replace these types of players in the portal. What types of players? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to shit on these guys individually. Right. But what types of players are we talking about? Yeah. Players that couldn't play for a 1-11 in team? Those are the guys that are going to be tough to replace in the portal? I find that really hard to believe. There might not be championship, very many championship caliber players in the portal, but that isn't necessarily what they need with all of these available scholarships. You'd like to nail a couple of the big transfers, right? You need some more contributors. And, and Coach Prime said it himself. Like, he would love to get several starters on both sides of the ball. If that happens, that's great. But you're telling me that you can't replace a wide receiver who couldn't play last season with another wide receiver that's in the portal right now? Mm -hmm. Replace. Not even upgrade. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty confident you can upgrade on several of these positions. And people are just looking at the numbers and saying, well, how are they going to replace these guys? Every single one of them is highly replaceable. Yeah. Yeah. Look, at, I understand, like, the parents that are upset, the kids that are upset. But if you go on Twitter, man, and you look at these kids who enter the portal and look at the offers they're getting, I mean, they're clearly taking a step down. There are only a handful of guys are getting Power 5 offers. And if you are getting a Power 5 offer, it's from a lower-tiered school. Save for Montana. Right. Exactly. And everyone else is out there getting, you know, Division Two offers, FCS offers, Group of Five offers, mostly. Like, yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, and and we knew that. Mm -hmm. Again, none of these guys were star. I wouldn't even give them stars. Jordan Tyson certainly showed star potential. He got hurt, mm -hmm. and that changed everything. I think if he finished last season and also was healthy, it might be a very different situation for, sure. for him. Um, but the big takeaway from this is everyone who thinks that this wasn't by design and any fan or media member who's saying, oh, my God, what's going on at Colorado? It's a mass exodus. Everyone is on their way out. Coach Prime has rubbed, ruffled feathers the wrong way. Mm -hmm. This shows you just how wrong those people were, which, again, we knew yesterday. But it just highlights it. This was all by design. Grant Page said everyone who entered the portal was told to enter the portal or at least encouraged yeah. to enter the portal. So don't get it twisted that this was some reaction to like coach prime and you know, Grant page specifically, I'll, I'll, I'll mention like what I, it's the same sort of situation we talked about yesterday. Would I have loved for that to be a guy who went to my high school um, in Boulder to have been part of the resurgence? Yes, but it's time to win. Yeah, it's time to win. Some feelings are going to get hurt along the way, and uh, and this is the type of stuff that happens when when you want to turn things around immediately, not eventually, immediately. 
just to wrap things up, just on the people with outrage, it's like lazy analysis too. Go look at these guys who entered the portal. Go see how many games have been played, how many yards they have. That is not easy to or not hard to replace when it's literally zero. Uh, exactly. Um, and then just on the whole process, I mean, you were the one really on it talking about there's stages to this. There's you should enter the portal. We think you should enter the portal. You should really consider about entering the portal. And then there's you you're you're going to be entering the portal. basically. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is. Uh, and I mean, I I think we even underestimated how aggressive it would be. Right. Um, but it is. It is what it is. Uh, and this was the final stage. You know, the portal closes what? Sunday. Uh, Sunday. So this was the final showing of the door yep. before they would have to go to that very, very backup plan that we talked about, which was the academic scholarship, which c clearly yeah. uh, they're not going to have to turn to. No. Um, so I want to be super clear that I absolutely wish the best for all of these guys. Uh, I want each and every one of them to succeed as long as they don't go to Colorado State or Nebraska. And I hope that, you know, I hope that it all works out for them. Mm -hmm. But... No one should be surprised by what's happening. And even, I don't know. I think even like, I, I think it's it's fair game to talk to the players and ask them how they feel about this. I think that even like talking to parents is I mean, yeah, what are you weak. expecting? I know. Everyone, I would hope that, you know, if I got fired and someone called my mom and said, <laughs> what, what do you right. think about this? That she would be like, I think it's bullshit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so what else are they going to say? <laughs> you know, putting someone's parents quotes in an article is questionable in my opinion. Not questionable, but just you knew it was going to happen. Right. Yeah. Not really learning much from that uh, interview. Yeah. Shout out to Pins and Aces, the official golf apparel partner of All City and DMVR. We love our Pins and Aces gear. Um, they got amazing polos, hats, golf bags, favorite beer sleeves, all kinds of good stuff. And right now... You can cash in on an exclusive offer if you check out pinsandaces.com. Use code DMVR and you can receive 15% off your first order and get free shipping. That's pinsandaces.com. And then also shout out to Shador's number two Ooh. barbecue sauce. Let's go. Shador's number Give two. Give me some of that. There you go. Shador's number two barbecue is a tomato based, rich, thick, sweet, molasses y style barbecue sauce with tangy vinegar. And fiery heat that finishes with a subtle smoky note. Uh, you guys have been blowing them up, and you still have an opportunity to do so. If you haven't already got your hands on Shador's number two, go to plbse.com for a limited time and use code ALLCITY, A-L-L-C-I-T-Y, all one word, at checkout for 10% off your order of number two barbecue. Stuff is damn good. Yeah. It is damn good. Let's go. Shout out Shador's number two. Shout out Pins and Aces. All right, we still have... Oh, real quick. Go for it. Um, as it relates to the Shador's uh, barbecue sauce sales blowing up because of this awesome community. Yeah. And what's great is, you know, with the promo code, um, we can directly track if it's coming from our people, and it is. Yep. Um, and I should say they can directly track if it's coming from our people, which is so cool. And I just want to, again, thank everyone who has our backs, like... Uh, Coach Prime gave a shout out to the Barstool Colorado account, which they do a great job. Yeah, they, um, they nail it on Twitter. Um, but I just love that people are in there in the mentions being like, also shout out DNVR Buffs. <laughs> you should check them out. They do a great job too. Like, that's what uh, I just appreciate you guys so much for that type of stuff. Yep. Shout out Buff Nation. You guys never cease to amaze. Um, Clint Brewster tweet or spring game numbers? Uh, you can do the Clint Brewster tweet, but we did talk about it a little bit already. Um, I just have a few points on this. Uh, Clint Brewster tweeted out he works for 24-7 Sports. Uh, is this yesterday or today? Yesterday. He said, the unfortunate thing with all the Colorado players transferring out today is that I don't believe there's enough quality players currently in the transfer portal to replace them with now. And, I mean, it's interesting because this is obviously an experiment. They're really trying out to see if you can build a team through the portal. Entirely. And that's never really been done before. Like, you know, of course, Lincoln Riley, you look at Lincoln Riley USC last year and what they did. I mean, he brought in so many guys from Oklahoma, which is already a power program, that it's not... I think it's hard to really draw comparisons there. But um, in terms of there not being enough quality transfer players in the portal, 
we're still seeing record numbers of players enter the portal. Yep. And these are 22, 21, four, five star guys who just haven't been able to get on the field or just haven't liked their coaching opportunity who are in the portal. Like these are legitimate players. Absolutely. You just had a Florida State player on the defensive line enter the portal today. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very, I don't know what the word is, mm, naive maybe to believe that Coach Prime sent these guys on their way without looking at the portal yeah there's a plan <laughs> yeah like he's not gonna all of a sudden like go on to like rivals.com <laughs> slash transfer Top 2023 <laughs> transfer portal and be like, players. oh shit there's no one good in here <laughs> like he knows exactly what the landscape is and he's seen every single one of these guys practice <coughs> Well, wrong tube action there. <laughs> wrong tube. <laughs> I'm dying. Uh, I'll carry this for a second for you. Take some deep breaths. Um, I'm good. It's yeah, like he has a plan. He's seen the players that are available. He's talked to his coaches. Like I just mentioned, he's seen the players who just <clears throat> entered the portal practice every single day for the last month or so. So to act like he's going to turn into the portal and be like, oh, huh, wasn't expecting this. There's not many guys in here. It's silly uh, and, and greatly underestimates how detail oriented and in tune and smart coach prime is with everything that he does and his coaching staff yes who have are obviously very connected around the country and know all these players and have recruited a lot of these players yeah and, and, and also you would be silly to think that players haven't reached out before they enter the portal i ain't hard to find he says yes exactly and that is allowed yeah you know any player in the country could text coach prime right now and tell him, hey, coach, do you, you got a spot for me if, if I hit the portal? Mm -hmm. And hey, if you're out there, text Coach Prime and tell him, that, ask him if he's got a spot for you. Because, you know, now he's got ammunition to work with. Yep. What are we up to now? 17, 18 open scholarships? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wide open. Yesterday, I think when we jumped on the show, they were down to 69 players. Four additional today. Uh, since our show ended yesterday, four additional. So that is now 20. They've got 20 open mm -hmm. scholarships. And don't forget, Charlie Offerdahl might deserve a scholarship. Caleb Mathis might deserve a football scholarship. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, they can work with that sort of thing. But they have a plan for the guys that they want to go out and get to fill these spots. And you'd be crazy to think otherwise, at least half of them, if not more. For sure. Uh, we got numbers from the spring game. ESPN said it was their most viewed spring game since 2016. What was the game in 2016? Um, I'm looking for the tweet. But I can tell you that last year's uh, USC spring game had 287,000 people watch it. 551,000 watch Colorado's spring game on Th Saturday. More than double. More than double. More than double. And remember, that was a very similar situation, right? Lincoln Riley comes into USC, he's flipping everything over. He's got Jordan Addison, Caleb Mathis. Like, that was a... Mm -hmm. Caleb Williams. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Caleb Mathis is ours. <laughs> um, and you might see him on this show very soon. Yep. Um, that was a high, you know, uh, intrigue spring game. Not mm -hmm. just a random run-of-the-mill, this team's good, we're going to put their spring game on. Uh, no, that was a high entry game. The Buffs doubled it, and you know there is a press release or a, whatever you want to call it, a media release coming from the Pac-12 and from the University of Colorado going out to every network today. Yep. And look what Coach Prime can do. Yep. He doubled up uh, you know, last <laughs> season's spring game that was aired on ESPN. So um, we knew the numbers were going to be huge. I'd like to see like compared to other things other than spring games, but um, that was that's a, an insane number. So it says second most watched spring game since 2016. What could have possibly been a more watched spring game than this? I don't know. Also, why not just move up the years? Yeah. Most watched spring game since, since 2017. 2019. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever it was. Uh, it's a 92% year-over-year jump from last year. Um, I mean, went all according to plan, it sounds like. I mean, and then some. Yep, absolutely. You know, and even the the light snow... Like, looked really cool on TV. Oh, yeah. And it didn't look, like, miserably cold. Everyone in the stands had a smile on their face. It's not yeah. like when they cut to, like, Soldier Field in December and everyone's, <laughs> like, all you can see is their eyes and, like, the top of their nose and they've got, like, four blankets over them. Like, it wasn't that cold. All you see is, like, everyone's breath coming off yeah, of the crowd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it was 
cold enough where you needed to layer up, and that's it. Yep. Um, Aaron Butler spoke to 247 Sports, Greg Biggins, um, about his trip to Colorado. Aaron Butler sounds like a spokesperson for the university. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, so he visited in March. He came back for, I believe this was an official visit for him. He said, this was a more in-depth visit. We talked more about NIL, my role in the offense, where the program is going, how they plan to attack the transfer portal, things like that. It was cool to watch the spring game and get an idea for the talent on the team and what's coming in. I thought Shador looked great, and the rest of the team is going to be radically different this fall from what we just saw in the spring game. Um, he spoke further about the players that have entered the portal. He said himself, this was always the plan. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> On my visit, there were around 40 recruits visiting, and I bet almost 30 were transfer portal players. Uh, we read this quote yesterday, but he said they have a lot of commitments coming in, and these guys are dudes. They have players from major schools, SEC dudes, who look like men that can come in and play right away. Dion is so connected, especially in the South. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised when they start seeing some of the announcements coming soon here. Oh, I can't wait for that day, Aaron. Yep. Uh, he continued uh, talking about Coach Prime. He said he gets it. He knows how to build a program and what it takes to get there. He knows what kind of players you have to have. And he told me the majority of players that started in the spring game were going to leave. <laughs> Interesting. He told us, us that too, Aaron. <laughs> uh, that was a chance for them to showcase themselves for other programs. He also said that to us, too. They knew that was their last game. As for me, I love the fit and how they want to use me. I, they feel I can step in right away and be a difference maker. I'll be, mu I'll be moved all over the place to take advantage of mismatches, and I definitely have high interest in Colorado right now. Bang. Just the type of stuff. Like, I absolutely love the way that he's like defending the school. Like, If mm -hmm. that doesn't... I don't know if I've ever heard a set of quotes that tells me that a guy is like in before he's officially in mm -hmm. more than I've than I than I feel about those. Like he, the only thing he could have said that made, could have made me more confident is like Colorado's my number one. Good luck beating them or something along right. those lines. But the fact that he's like all of this is expected. They've got all these guys coming in. They're huge. They're amazing. <laughs> like he's, uh, he sounds like he needs to come join the show. Yeah, a third chair for him. Two-way player, uh, four-star 247 sports composite, top 100 player, seventh overall athlete in this upcoming class. Six foot and a half, 165. Um, I'm trying to remember and see if he posted a top five or something. If I remember correctly, I think he did. It was yeah. like a top five, I believe. Yeah. Like CU, Oregon, a few other schools in there. Okay. Um, what else do we got? So Bronte Johnson has released a top 10 that includes CU. He is a 6'3", 170-pound athlete, four-star 247 sports composite, 151st player, 11th overall athlete in the 2024 class from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, if you want the top 10 schools, I can list them, but it's Colorado's in there, and this is another two-way player. Yep. And 6'3", 170. It's a nice frame for a 17, 18 year old. I was going to say, man, it, every guy's different, but like, he could be a 6'3, 200 pound guy in a couple mm -hmm. years. Good. At, so, his uh, scouting report on 247 Sports, first line says, good athlete who also has college basketball interest. Second line says, has length and fluidity to project to wide receiver or the defensive backfield in college. Defensive backfield? At that length, <laughs> jeez. I mean, Coach Prine obviously likes the long, he big love, corners, he man. Does. He does, man. I'm like, <laughs> I'm imagining like a six three, two hundred pound corner. Um, it's like Tariq Woolen out yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I don't even think he was quite two hundred pounds. Um, so this is from our guy Matt H at Scobuffs twenty two. Uh, just a couple nuggets on some other guys that have visited. Uh, he said... Internet sleuth of the year. Yes. Um, so Steve Wiltfong had a college football live show, I guess, yesterday, and he pulled tidbits from that. He said, after saying Tennessee was the leader for Boo Carter a few weeks ago, Boo told Steve Wiltfong that everything was 50-50 now. Let's go. Um, Brandon Davis Swain is also coming back on June 9th for his third visit, and that will be an official visit. Three vi I think he might have made more visits to Boulder in the last few months than me. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> uh, he coming? 
I sure think so. Sounds like it. Um, former Georgia cornerback and 2022 four-star recruit Marcus Washington is scheduled to visit CU. Was the 147th overall player, 18th overall corner in the 2022 class from Groveta- Grovetown, Georgia. Six foot 170. Obviously enrolled at Georgia last year and just entered the portal two days ago. Uh, he's visiting a few other schools, but he's coming to see you. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, could use a little help there for sure. Yep. Uh, Chad, with a great point in the comments, says uh, he come in Jake and RK. Remember that Butler... Uh, his dad played with Coach Prime in Baltimore, and they're still friends. Mm, love that. You know, Coach Prime always, um, I don't know what the word is, <laughs> pokes fun at the fact that he had to play for multiple different NFL teams. He's like, I don't understand that, you know. Yeah. It's actually working out quite well in this phase of his life because, damn, if, if there are a ton of former Coach Prime teammates that have kids coming up right now. Yep. Pretty amazing, man. There's Antonio Gates Jr. playing in college. Did you see that? Yes, I did. Insane. Frank Gore Jr. in college, too. Frank Gore Jr. is a beast. He is a beast. Um, all right. One more little news tidbit. Guys, get your questions in now. We'll get to them very shortly. Did you ever see the uh, Frank Gore Jr. Uh, interaction after their bowl game with his aunt? I, didn't he, like, push her away or something? Yeah. I, told, I was <laughs> like, like, I want to calm down. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> That's what she was, said. like, screaming on the <laughs> camera. <laughs> It's awesome. That's so good. Um, also, subscribe to the podcast, guys, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We'd appreciate your five-star review. Um, we'll get to the Zach Courtney tweet. First off, former Florida, Florida State defensive lineman Joshua Farmer has entered the transfer portal. This was a three-star 2020 recruit, 649th overall, 79th overall defensive lineman. Was listed at 6'3", 290. I'm sure he's bigger than that now. Um, or maybe even slimmed down. 6'3", 273, it says. Last year played in all 13 games as a sophomore. Had 15 on 15 tackles. Six tackles for a loss and two sacks. We could use that. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder, is there three? Yeah, there's three Florida State guys, right? Gant, McClendon. And now Farmer. Mm-hmm. Could we get the the trio, the tripod, if you will? <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a good shot at getting at least a handful, I think. Yeah, I think I wouldn't be surprised if you see a package deal coming down. So Joshua Farmer no on uh, last year's roster listed at 6'3", 304, actually. Oh, okay, let's go. So he's been beefing up. Yep. Um... Was a freshman honorable All-American by College Football News. All ACC academic team. There you go. Uh, before we get to your guys' questions, shout out to our friends, the presenting sponsors of the show, Illegal Pete's. Boom. Graduation season is coming up, and Illegal Pete's is here to help cater all your events uh, with their delicious ingredients and customizable options that are per- the perfect way to treat your guests to a culinary adventure they'll never forget. Some were saying that about our uh, illegal pizza on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> it was certainly an adventure trying to keep it warm <laughs> in the freezing cold. Yes, it was. <laughs> to book your order, head to catering.illegalpeats.com. Don't make yourself pull another all-nighter. Book your graduation catering ahead of time. Illegal Pete's, your go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. Then shout out to DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, we need a pick of the week. What are the Nuggets tonight? Do you know? <clears throat> Let's look at our good friends, the Denver Nuggets, who are coming back home for a pivotal pivotal game five against the Minnesota Timberwolves, um, who almost blew their chance to come play here anyway. Um, <laughs> the Nuggets are 10-point favorites. Wow. So here's what we do when we see a big spread like that. We go in here. You scroll all the way to the right across the top line to quarters, and then you find the first quarter where the Nuggets are minus three and a half. If you feel like they're going to, you know, take care of business tonight, which I do, and they're going to come out with a lot of energy, Mm -hmm. you take that minus three and a half in the first quarter. Yep. Ball arena is going to be rocking. Producer Kale is going to be there. Let's go. Happy birthday, Kale. Happy birthday, Kale. (laughs) Uh, Alyssa Twerkin or what? I think so, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> we all can't be no, working all the time. Someone I'm twerking twerk. tonight, which is why Alyssa's not here. Uh, right? uh, a little trade <laughs> Someone little always trade-sies. has to be twerking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook is the official sports betting partner of the NBA. And right now, new customers can make a $5 pregame Moneyline bet and score $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. They also have no sweat, same game parlays every day during the NBA playoffs and tons of deals across the top of the home screen. Download the app now and sign up with code DMVR. New customers can make a $5 pregame money line bet and score $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code DMVR. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER in Massachusetts. Call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplinema.org in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700. On behalf of Bo- Boot, Hill. Boot Hill Casino and Resort, 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. And then finally, shout out to our friends over at Breckenridge Brewery. Uh, there's going to be an obscene amount of Breckenridge Brewery crushed here at the DMVR bar tonight yep. for the Nuggets' attempt to close out the Minnesota Timberwolves. You can try out some of our favorites, the Mile High City Golden Ale, Avalanche Amber Ale right in front of me. Uh, the Mile High or the um, Mountain Beach Sour, Strawberry Sky. You can check out their beer locator at www.breckbrew.com to find a Breck Brew near you. All right. Um, should, oh, do you want to do the Zach Courtney? Should tweet? we just do it? Yeah. yeah, let's talk about it. Okay. So Zach Courtney entered the portal, uh, I want to say it was before the spring game. Okay. Um, and he tweeted out today, for the coaches who are trying to recruit me, I am sorry, but I will not be able to get y'all my film from my practices last season since I am not allowed to have it because the head coach at CU won't allow it. This is very unlucky, and if you have any questions, just text me. What do you think, Ryan? How, scale of 1 to 10, how savage do you want me to be? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we just got thunder in the background. That felt like a warning from from God. So uh, let's keep it around a five or a six. So you don't think I should say, why don't you have any game film to show other teams? Um, well, you already said it. Uh, again, I hope Zach Courtney lands on his feet and ends up with a great opportunity. Uh, he followed up and said, this isn't a shot at Dion. Yep. Let's coach prime to you. Um <laughs> But, you know, I'm just trying to tell everyone, um, coaches w- don't do this. You don't just, like, happily offer up film to other schools um, so they can evaluate guys on your team. Well, I'll just say this. This isn't some sort of, like, outlandish procedure. No. This tweet was put out today. Going over to the Prime Tracker at thedmbr.com, Zach Courtney entered the portal on April 19th. Um, Look, man, that's almost a week. Coach Prime kind of made his feelings clear that the players that entered the portal Mm. before the spring game Mm. uh, made their own decision. And um, maybe you should have asked for game film or practice film, I guess, before. What did I say? You know, you no-call, no-show from your job. You're probably not getting a wreck. Yeah, you give your two weeks, you work your ass off, and then you part ways. You'll probably get your recommendation. Yep. Well, there you go. Yep. And that being said, I just don't think coaches are 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 you know willingly offering up that tape. I yeah. don't think that's that's rare. Mm-hmm. Now he did say from last season, which I guess kind of throws a, a little bit of a wrench in the gears, but. Should have asked for tape after last season. <laughs> and I've seen some other guys like, you know, once you have your hands on it, you can do with it with, with what you yeah. please, I assume. Uh, but if you entered the portal before you, you know, downloaded your film, well, bummer. Sorry. Questions. What do we got today, Kale? And again, why are you asking for favors after you left? I, exactly. It's been a week. Poorly managed. Very so. Very much so. Super chat from no one. Did anybody not watch Coach Prime's documentary with JSU? He did this already and has succeeded at JSU. We watched it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I always wonder when people are talk in the comments if they're talking to us or just like the world. Because there were comments yesterday that are like, y'all aren't paying attention. 
<laughs> this is exactly what Coach Prime did at JSU. I'm like, we know. I promise. That's what we're we've paying been saying. Attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like, they must just be talking to the masses. Yep. Yeah. Uh, e love, how you ask for changes and get mad when change is happening? I mean, that's been my point basically since Coach Prime was hired. It's so mad. I don't think is the right word. Um, change is uncomfortable for yes. everyone, and I shouldn't say everyone. I don't feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but I think that when people just see chaos, what they interpret to be chaos and change and all these things happening. They just start to, you know, clam up a little bit and they're like, whoa, whoa, are we sure this is the right thing to do? And, you know, then when Gant and McClendon and Farmer and all these commits start rolling in, everyone will go back to breathing. And, you know, it's just like all they're seeing right now is subtraction. And that just makes people uncomfortable. Um, I I just wish they would just keep that to themselves, to Mm -hmm. be honest. But. Um, so I don't think mad is the right word. It's just change makes people uncomfortable, but that's what I, you know, was talking about yesterday. And like I said, I was all going all the way back to coach prime's first day on the job. I said that like, mm-hmm. you, do you want to change or do you not? Cause it's going to be a lot of change. Right. Um, I'll just say, I mean, there's a lot of emotion involved, obviously. Yeah. That's but f- I mean, sports are emo- the whole reason we're here is because sports are directly tied to our emotions. Exactly. And there, but there's people who actually got attached to some of these players. And so when you see them enter the portal, there's going to be sad people. It's just how it is. Uh, Next one from Elfreddy, Jake and Ryan. Did you see Coach Prime run out ahead of the team? That was something he did not run since his nine surgeries historic. And he looked pretty good doing it, man. Yeah, he did. Uh, He was fired up, though, uh, the the start there. That was literally like my favorite moment of the entire thing was them running out of the tunnel and just how – hyped coach prime was and if you haven't checked it out um go check out uh, the spotlight that rg did yes on our channel is like the most recent video right after we posted this show yesterday mm-hmm. um and watch from his angle of when coach prime and the team ran out that's like one of my favorite shots you know 10 seconds or whatever of them running out from the entire weekend Mm -hmm. because you can really hear the roar of the crowd and like feel the energy uh, that they're trying to bestow onto that team as they come out uh chad's asking when they start practicing for the fall we don't know yet we'll get that information and we'll relay that but generally the end of july or the very beginning of august yep football season yes (laughs) big 21 what position do you guys really want to see upgrade at uh well defensive line i think that's the number one quote unquote hole at this point Mm -hmm. Uh, they have three guys on on scholarship as it stands so they they definitely need guys there yep defensive line i'm interested to see what they do at wide receiver what they do on the offensive line if they go further down that hole too trying to get more guys in um and now defensive back i mean yep we've talked about all the safeties they're bringing in they're going to bring in more and they've got to bring in more corners too so a few i'm not nearly as concerned about uh corner as okay. I am about defensive line. And I shouldn't say the word concerned, just you definitely like that's a position where you're constantly rotating guys. You're trying to, right. you know, keep guys fresh and whatnot. So you need, I think it's fair to say you need six on the defensive line that you like. Yeah. Um, whereas corner, if you want, you could just have, you know, Travis and Cormani out there the whole game. Mm-hmm. So not as, as, you know, important in my eyes, but still they're probably going to get guys at all these positions. Yes, exactly. DL is of a, utmost importance. So Alfredi asked, how much faith do you have in the coaching staff to deliver players for this year? I mean, pretty high. 100 out of 100. <laughs> yeah. Um, commitments are coming guys. And like I said, it doesn't, they don't need stars. No. If they get stars, let's go. But when people keep saying, how can they replace all these guys? If you get guys who can contribute, you have upgraded, not just replaced. If you get in most of these cases, if you get guys who are just good practice players, you've replaced them. Well, and just this whole process is about building a foundation. It's literally year one, yep. the first year gutting out the roster, bringing in all these new guys. You just want to build a foundation this year and then add to that in the 2024 class, in the portal, in December. 
and from there. I mean, it's not going to be fixed overnight. He's going to try like hell, and I believe he's going to get some dogs, but yep. not going to be fixed overnight. Uh, Val says that sh they really enjoyed the DMVR Spotlight show. Yeah, it was a banger. RG just does such high-level content. Yeah. It's He's amazing. Really good shit. Uh, Zion, what happened to Cameron Davis and Stacey Gage coming to the spring game? There were so many names. Um, and people were dropping out left and right, too. We didn't find out till two or three days before that Jaden Riddell and someone else were going to Alabama instead of CU. Um, it's just very fluid. I mean, these are kids. Yeah, and there's plenty of time to get them on campus. And yep. hey, maybe it ends up working out because you get them out here in May or June when it's beautiful. Right. Stacy Gage had CU in a top ten or something like that too. So nice. Super chat, Super chat from David. Petition to, de to dedicate the season to Betty. Betty Peggy. Betty. Betty. Oh, Betty. Yeah. Yes. The, Betty is Peggy's sister who mm -hmm. passed away. Yep. Um, that would be awesome. Um, yeah. Be great. Good petition. We'll see more Peggy though for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Coach Prime loves her. How could you not? UB, where did you get the Sco Buff shirt? DNVRlocker.com. Yes, sir. DNVRlocker.com. These are back in stock, by the way. More heat on the way. Yep. Stay Sweet. tuned. Fedora, what happens to the linebacker who wanted to come back for his last year? Guy Thomas? Assuming he's just going through. He wasn't at. Well, he was at uh, Pro Day, so he's just going through draft prep stuff. Okay, so he is yeah. in the it, it, on to the next stage. Yeah. I mean, literally haven't heard his name yeah. besides him saying he wants to come back and then he was at Pro Day. Right, so. right. Okay. There you go. About it. Smash that like. We're a little low today compared to where we were yesterday, which was a absolute banger. Yes, it was. Uh, appreciate it. You know, all the kind comments and support for all, for all the shows. But yesterday's was insane. It's pretty special. Yep. Uh, an absolute banger. One for the books for sure. Chris asked when... Can the players transfer in after April 30th just in case they miss the deadline? So April 30th deadline is just to enter the portal. But he's saying if they don't enter the portal by the 30th, then what? Um, well, then we'll... I'm pretty sure you can't enter again until the season starts, Unless right? your coach is fired. Yeah. Um, those are players that are probably going to be asked to be put on financial aid and so scholarship then. There you go. There you go. We'll be back tomorrow. We have a guest. Yes, we do. Um, if you paid attention during the show, you already know who it is. Sam, 1,200 viewers. If we still only have 300 likes. Come on. Smash that like button. Love you guys, though. Subscribe to the pod. We'll be back tomorrow. Sco Buffs. Big show tomorrow. Sco Buffs.